Hello Messiah, this is Katie and Magdalena with our hymn devotion for the week. This week we're going to look at one of another one of my favorite hymns um, for times of, of trial and of doubt and of assurance. Um, this is hymn number 700, Abide With Me. So I just want to share with you a couple things I learned about this hymn. Um, and then some devotional thoughts. And I hope you enjoy singing it with us uh, at our online service this Sunday. And I also hope that you'll look at my um, devotion on the website. I hope to include a link to a choir singing, um, singing this hymn for you because I think it's familiar enough that I don't need to play it this week. So, Abide With Me is often uh, mistaken as being an evening hymn because of the first line, Abide With Me, Fast Falls the Eventide. But actually the author intended it to apply more broadly um, to trying situations when we need to be assured um, that God is always with us. Um, and especially, we know that this hymn is sung a lot at funerals. There's a lot of language in here that focuses on God being with us at the most difficult time, at the time of our death. Um, death is a little bit more on all of our minds as this pandemic continues to, um, to rage and as we hear about more and more people facing death. Um, but I think as Christians, we need to be confident and assured that not only is God with us at the darkest hour, the hour of our death, but also that he promises that he will take us to be with him in heaven um, granting us eternal life through Jesus Christ. So when we look at it in that you know, more positive and more hopeful way, I think that um, a hymn about death, which may seem kind of sad and, um, and discouraging, really becomes a hymn full of a lot of, of hope. Another thing that I learned about the hymn writer, well, interestingly, he wrote this in the year that he died. So he wrote it, I think, earlier in the year, and then he died the following November. So um, quite coincidental, but maybe he knew the words that we needed to hear um, because he, that hour was coming for him. Um, but he actually used the text um, from the Gospel of Luke as inspiration, the story of the road to Emmaus, where two disciples are very sad and downtrodden after their Lord had been crucified. And they are walking on the road to Emmaus when Jesus appears to them. He asks them why they're so sad, and he proceeds to teach them about his death and resurrection and how it, everything that happened was foretold in the scriptures. And then, um, in the part of the story that this hymn kind of takes inspiration from, he um, comes to the town with them and he's about to keep going. But the disciples stay, say, no, Lord, stay with us or abide with us because evening is coming. And he stays with them and he breaks bread with them and they recognize him and then he vanishes. So um, you can read that story in my devotion. I've written the text out there for you, um, or you can check it out in your Bible from Luke 24, chapter 24. Um, so uh, we can look at this text and all of the different situations that the author has laid out for us that are difficult in our lives, but that God is, is with us through. So the first verse, as I've mentioned, talks about death. It also talks about when um, helpers or when our friends fail us, that God is still with us. He's the help of the helpless. Um, the second verse also um, I found uh, particularly suitable for um, our situation today. It talks about how God remains with us when everything around us is changing. Um, when we see earth's joys passing, when the things that used to give us comfort and hope are no longer here, um, maybe not only because of the pandemic and the changing world, but just because as life goes on, things die and decay. But God does ne never changes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's quite a strong message of comfort in that second verse. Um, the third verse talks about how the Lord is with us through temptation. He guides us through cloud and through sunshine. So in times of sadness and in times of joy. In the fourth verse, we are assured that we don't need to fear any 
anything, not even the weight of pain, um, not the sadness of tears, um, because death and the grave have no victory. Christ has overcome both of those in his resurrection from the dead. And then finally, this hymn wraps up with another image of death, um, where at our last hour, Jesus will hold, hold his cross before us to show us that through his death, he has paved the way for us um, to live eternally with him. The wonderful image in life and death, O Lord, abide with me. So just a couple uh, little things to wrap up here. Um, I hope to link the text of the full hymn um, on my devotion online. This hymn actually has eight verses. I think we're only singing four on Sunday and there's only five in our hymnal. Um, but there are six in the hymnal that I'm familiar with from uh, my Lutheran church. And then there are another two additional ones that really haven't been included in hymnals lately. So if you're interested in seeing the full text, you can check that out there. And um, also wanted to share, it's just, it's nice to have these little stories because I do pick the hymns that we sing, but um, I've been singing this one to Magdalena for a long time at night because we get quite fussy at night and we need to be assured that God is with us even in times of distress. Right, Magdalena? Yeah. All right. Well, I hope that you all have a wonderful week, that you can use this hymn to be assured of God's presence with us now and always. God's peace.